Hello friend, welcome you all in the IT Pulse session of biomolecules. This is fourth session of biomolecule. This chapter is related in class 11th NCRT biology book. I BP Sa PGT Bio Kendra Vidyalaya Kesapuram. Before going to start my actual lecture, I have asked some questions related to the my previous session. Let us look these questions. First question was how many types of amino acid are found to occur in proteins? My next question was name any two aromatic amino acids. Question number 3, which type of bond are found in the proteins and polysaccharides? Fourth question was, what does tertiary structure of, of a protein indicate? And last question, why is chitin also called fungus cellulose? Now, I hope all you will be and able to answer these questions because it is related with my previous class. Now, let us see the question first. How many types of amino acids are found to occur in the protein? Protein which is known as polymer of amino acids no doubt and various types of amino acids linked together to form protein with the help of peptide bond. Now, we have already discussed there are 20 different types of amino acids are there that amino acid linked together with the help of peptide bond and help in the formation of protein. Then the protein form different type of structure like primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure and quaternary structure. Okay. My second question was name any two aromatic amino acids aromatic as the term indicate which gives smell. The two types of aromatic amino acids are phenylalanine and tyrosine. Let us see the third question which type of bond are found in the protein and polysaccharide. We have already discussed in carbohydrate chapter at the time of discussion in uh, disaccharide like maltose, sucrose, lactose, these three disaccharide are formed with the help of two monosaccharide and these two monosaccharide combine with the help of glycosidic bond. And in protein there are 20 amino acids, these 20 amino acids are linked together with the help of carboxyl group and amino group and for peptide bond. So, your answer is correct that is in protein peptide bonds are there and in polysaccharide there is glycosidic bond. Now, the third question what does the tertiary structure of protein indicate? We have seen already seen in our last uh, session different types of protein. One of the protein is protein structure is tertiary structure of protein. This tertiary structure of protein indicate three dimensional globular arrangement of the polypeptide chain. Now, the last question why is chitin also called fungal cellulose? Because the in fungi its cell wall is made by chitin. So, because chitin form the cell wall of the most member of the fungi. So, these are the five questions which are related to the last topics. Now, I hope all questions which are related to the, these topics you will be able to answer this. Now, today my session is lipid and nucleic acid. First of all lipids. Lipids are known as 
heterogeneous group of compound which is formed just like carbohydrate, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen where the oxygen is less in comparison to the carbohydrate. So, for the oxidation of lipid it require more oxygen. So, lipids are known as heterogeneous compound which includes long chain of hydrocarbons. Lipid molecules hold large amount of energy and are energy storage molecules. So, lipid are also called energy storage molecules. Lipids are generally ester of fatty acids and are building block of biological membrane because most of the membrane plasma membranes or the cell membrane are made by lipids. Most of the lipids have polar and non polar head and non polar tail just like this is the head region, this one is the tail region. This head region is known as polar head and this one is non polar. Fatty acids just I have discussed in my last session. So, let, let us look the fatty acid can be classified into unsaturated fatty acid and saturated fatty acid because in saturated fatty acid there is single bond in between carbon and carbon and in unsaturated in between carbon and carbon there is double and triple bonds are there. So, fatty acid has been classified into two main group unsaturated and saturated. Blood classified lipid based on their chemical composition that are these are the classification. First of all the lipids has been classified into simple lipids, conjugated lipids and derived lipids. Simple lipids which is called homolipids example fats and oils. It is also called triglycerides. These simple lipids are known as natural fat or oils and second one part is waxes. Natural fats are made by fatty acid and glycerol. For the formation of one natural fat that is simpler one is triglyceride, three molecules of fatty acid and one molecule of glycerol is required. If the glycerol as the alcohol, other alcohol combined with the fatty acid then it for waxes. So, waxes are for fatty acid and other alcohols. Now, the second one conjugated fatty acid, these conjugated fatty acids are made by fatty acid, alcohol and other substance. This conjugated fatty acid has been defined into three broad categories that is phospholipid which contain other substance, fatty acid and alcohol is very common and in other substance there is the phosphate group. So, this group is called of conjugated lipid is called phospholipid when phosphate group are present along with the fatty acid and alcohol. Next one is glycolipids when the lipids conjugated lipids are formed by fatty acid, alcohol and carbohydrate that is called glycolipids and third one is lipoprotein. These lipoprotein are made by fatty acid, alcohol and phospholipids and other proteins. So, the third one lipids are called derived lipids which is formed by the hydrolysis of this one simple and the conjugated lipids. So, derived lipid can be defined as it is formed during the hydrolysis of simple and conjugated lipids. The example is esterols. We will look in this session. Now, the simply the third one derived lipids its example is steroids and cholesterols. Now, glycolipids first of all the glycolipids which included your syllabus glycolipids are the lipid whose head contain oligosaccharides with 1 to 15 saccharide residue. Phospholipids 
which contain a positively charged head which are linked to the negatively charged phosphates and estrol whose head contain steroids ring that is that is example is steroids now first of all you will see the the two main type of fatty acid that has been classified that is saturated and unsaturated the saturated fatty acid which i have already discussed in between the carbon and carbon there is single bonds so this one is called saturated fatty acid it has high melting point and boiling point the example of saturated fatty acid you will write easily that is CH3 CH2 6 COOH the first one fatty acid that is crapelic acid where the methyl group and CH2 group at 6 CH2 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 in the form of 6 then last one is coh group if this ch2 group is multiplied by 8 then it for capric acid if this ch2 group multiplied by 10 then it is called lauric acid so you see by multiplying the ch2 group 6 8 and 10 we can easily form the different type of fatty fatty acid that help in the formation of fat with the help of the bond that is called ester which i have already discussed in my last session the next one is if ch3 ch2 multiplied by 12 that is called myristic acid if that is multiplied by 14 that is very common palmitic acid coh so palmitic acid have carbon for 15 and if it is multiplied by 16 that for stearic acid so these are the some common saturated fatty acid you can easily write down this chemical formula by knowing for the ch2 group multiply by other 6 8 10 12 14 or 16 the two common is very very important for your syllabus that is palmitic acid and the stearic acid so you can now easily write the structure of this saturated fatty acid now look some unsaturated fatty acid unsaturated fatty acid you can also easily write the structure of some unsaturated fatty acids are you know in between the carbon carbon bond there will be double and triple bonds are there so all the unsaturated fatty acid no doubt have double or triple bond in between that just ch2 when multiply by 7 here ch3 ch2 multiply by 3 this structure is called 
acid this is unsaturated because in between the carbon carbon 1 3 at fifth carbon and sixth carbon there is a double bond so this is the structure of unsaturated fatty acid if this one ch3 ch2 multiply by 5 and the same structure here hydrogen is also present ch ch ch2 7 C O O H. Here in between the 7th and 8th carbon, there is double bond. So, you can easily by replacing 3 by 5 and the same structure as the first one unsaturated fatty acid, this one structure is called palmiotolic acid. So, with the help of this structure, you can easily write the saturated fatty acid and the unsaturated fatty acid by knowing where the double bond are present in which carbon atom and where it is multiplied by 7 or 5, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 and 16. So, this is the structure of saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid. Now, you know the simply the fatty acid are formed by the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and this help in the formation of fat. How this fat is formed? The, the simple, simple fatty acid which is made by three molecules of fatty acid when combined with glycerol one mol molecule of one mole of glycerol it for fat that is the simple fat which is made by fatty acid and glycerol that is called triglyceride. Now, have a look how this structure is formed. Chemically, the fat is defined as esters of glycerol and fatty acid or is a trisaccharides of fatty acids. Here, the write the structure of glycerol. This glycerol contain 3 OH group, no doubt. We have seen the structure of glycerol in carbohydrate that contain 3 OH group. And here is the fatty acid, 3 molecules of fatty acid 1, 2 and 3. I have seen the structure of the palmitic acid which is made by C15, H31, COH, COOH group. Now, the from the glycerol and the acid group from the palmitic acid it is going to be combined H and OH, H and OH, H and OH. Finally, three molecules of water is going to be released and the bond is formed that bond this one, this one, this one. This bond is called ester bond. You know when the acid combined with the alcohol that form ester. So, when the fatty acid combined with the glycerol molecule, three molecules of fatty acid because the glycerol contain three OH group. So, it formed the triglyceride that is the simple structure, three water molecules is released and the fat is formed with the help of ester bond and the enzyme which catalyze the formation of this that is called lipase. So, lipase enzyme help in the formation of ester, ester bond with the help of fatty acid and glycerol. Now, see the structure of the phospholipids. We have seen the phospholipids are conjugated form of the fat which is made by fatty acid, alcohol and phospholipid group and the phosphate groups are there. Now, see 
which is in, in your syllabus the structure of phospholipids. The phospholipids is also can you write easily, you can easily write the formula of glucose sorry glycerol. We have seen in the triglyceride C H 2 O H C H O H C H 2 O H here H is hidden then this H and O H of the fatty acid it is going to be combined and for here you can easily write O C double bond O that is R 1. Same can repeat here O C double bond O R 2 this is the same structure here the at third position there is a phosphate group here O P O H here O C H 2 C H 2 here is N and this C S 3 C S 3. So, this is the structure of a phospholipid that is called lecithin which help in the transport of molecules in plasma membrane. So, the phospholipid we can define as the phospholipids have only two fatty acid which are present at carbon 1 and carbon 2. They have phosphate group instead of third fatty acid we have seen membrane like plasma membrane which surround the cell and many structure within the cell are made by phospholipid bilayer. As the Philip mosaic, mosaic model of the plasma membrane says that is the trilaminar membrane where the bilayer of phospholipids are there. So, phospholipid is very very important which help in the formation of plasma membrane and many other structure inside the cell. Now, let us see the another structure of lipid that is called steroids. Steroids these are the lipids characterized by carbon skeleton. It consists of four fused ring, four fused ring example of steroid that is cholesterol. It is also found in the cell membrane. Cholesterol is also the precursor of various hormone, some hormone here mentioned here, some hormones like estrogen, testosterone. Beside this, vitamin D cortisone and many others. These are the precursors of this various type of important hormone vitamin D and the cortisones. Now, see the structure of steroids as we have already discussed steroid a type of lipids. Here the common example of steroid that is cholesterol the cholesterol we have seen already discussed it is made by four fused ring. So, make the four benzene like structure this type this structure is mentioned in your NCRT book. You can make easily the two benzene ring like structure and continuously the other benzene ring like structure are this type here 
this one is the third one. Now, the fourth one, this type, now here the second groups are attached. So, this is the structure of cholesterol. Here you find that there is the four fused ring 1, 2, 3, 4 and the other groups are also attached that is called cholesterol. Here is four fused rings are there. It is very important biomolecules. It helps in the formation of various types of hormones just we have seen testosterone, estrogen, vitamin D and others. Now, nucleic acid, nucleic acid as you know it is very very important in the living system that acts as a hereditary material that transfer the character from parent to the offspring it help in the formation of hereditary material. Now, the, as the term nucleic acid, this is acid like character which are present in the nucleus. We can define nucleic acid as it is a polymer of nucleotide. Polymer of nucleotides. Which nucleotides? are made by nitrogenous base sugar and phosphate. Here we have already discussed in carbohydrate at the time of discussing pentose sugar. The pentose sugar is very very important. There are two pentose sugar we have discussed name these two sugar pentose sugar that is okay, very good that is ribose and deoxyribose. This ribose and deoxyribose sugar are very important which is the chief or main material of DNA and RNA. On that basis the D DNA or RNA has been named. Here the deoxyribose sugar are present here ribose sugar are present. So, in case of nucleic acid which help which is made by the nucleotide the sugar is ribose and deoxyribose which is a pentose sugar and the formula will be very good C 5 H 10 O 5, but in case of deoxyribose one oxygen is less in deoxyribose the formula will be C 5 H 10 O 4, because in deoxyribose there is the deletion, deletion of one oxygen at carbon atom 2 of the ribose sugar. So, on that basis the DNA and RNA has been named deoxyribonucleic acid where the ribose sugar is in the form of deoxyribose and RNA ribonucleic acid where the ribose sugar are present. So, firstly you can divide the nitrogenous base and here the nitrogenous base are of two type. This nitrogenous base are made by two type of structure that has been divided. One is called purine another is called pyrimidine.
purine we can easily understand it is two ring two ring like structure so purine are made by two ring like structure and pyrimidine one ring purine the example of purine that is adenine and second one guanine adenine can be abbreviated by a and guanine by z so the purine is the chief constituent of the nucleotide that are there are two examples of purine that is adenine and guanine now pyrimidine it has single ring structure that is thymine abbreviated by t cytosine c and uracil that is u so nitrogenous base are of two type purine and pyrimidine purine adenine and guanine pyrimidine thymine cytosine and uracil now how we can write the structure of this purine and pyrimidine easily so here the some tips are there the first of all purines which is double ring structure the skeleton of purine that is here nitrogens and the another ring attached here here is n here is n so this is the skeleton of both the purine that is adenine and guanine now when we know the chemical name of the purine adenine and guanine we can easily write with the help of this this skeleton and by knowing the valency of carbon that is 4 and nitrogen that is 3 so by knowing this we can easily write the structure of adenine all five types of nitrogenous base let us write the structure of adenine first of all you know that the adenine is also known as six amino purine first of all name this here this one nitrogen is abbreviated as 1 2 3 4 5 6 here 7 8 and 9 so in purine nine atoms are there these are arranged in this fashion so if the adenine is known as six amino purine so at six position you place the amino group now you can with the help of valency you can easily write the structure of adenine now here carbon has 1 2 3 so one valency is left so here is double bond nitrogen 3 carbon here 1 2 3 so it is not complete so in that cases here is the double bond here carbon 1 2 3 nitrogen is also not so here next double bond are present in between that now here nitrogen has only two bond 
So, here you place the double bond. So, with the help of bonding structure, you can write the easily the structure of adenine that is called 6 amino purine. Now, see the structure of another nitrogenous base that is purine like guanine. Guanine which is designated by G, its chemical name is 2 amino 6 oxy purine. So, now if we know the chemical name of the guanine that is 6 amino 6 ox 2 amino 6 oxy purine we can easily write the structure of the guanine here is nitrogen. So, nitrogen has three valency, so it is also completed. So, all the valency of carbon and nitrogen is going to be completed. So, this structure is right, this is the structure of guanine. Guanine the chemical name is 2 amino 6 oxy purine. Now, when we write the structure of guanine and adenine that is purine, now you can easily write the structure of all three pyrimidine that is pyrimidine. As we know the pyrimidine is formed by the single ring structure, that single ring structure when we know the structure of their skeleton then we can easily write the all three form. The skeleton of pyrimidine that is same as purine, but here difference is in purine the double ring structures are there, but here single ring structures are there. The first ring structure of the adenine and guanine right here, here carbon, here is nitrogen, carbon no doubt, here is carbon very good, here is carbon and this carbon carbon is attached with the nitrogen. Okay, this is the skeleton of the pyrimidine. Now, first of all you see the structure of uracil. When we know the chemical name of uracil that is 2, 4 oxy pyrimidine. Two four oxy pyrimidine. So name it. Name slightly different from the purine. Here nitrogen is placed one, two, three, four, five, six. By knowing this, the placement of nitrogen and carbon, one two three four five six position, you can easily write the structure of uracil. Uracil has 2, 4 oxy means at 2 position and 4 position there is the oxy group. So, you can easily write here is the oxy group with the help of double bond, here is the oxy group, double bonds are there. Now, you can easily write 1, 2, 3, 4, here is the valency of carbon is satisfied, here 1, 2, 3 nitrogen has 3 valency. So, we can easily place hydrogen at nitrogen third. So, nitrogen is here carbon at second carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, here nitrogen has only 1, 2, 3. We do not place the double bond here because when we placing the double bond here carbon, carbon has 5 bond. So, nitrogen has attached with the hydrogen, here hydrogen is attached same as the purine. Now, in this cases the hydrogen carbon has 1, 2, 3. So, here is the double bond. So, we can easily write the structure of uracil with the help of the skeleton and by knowing the chemical name of the all the pyrimidine that is the uracil it is designated by U. 
Now, same you can write the structure of cytosine here. Cytosine, first of all, name the chemical name of cytosine is 4 amino 2 oxy pyrimidine. By knowing this chemical name of cytosine and the skeleton of pyrimidine, you can easily write the structure of cytosine. Now, see here the skeleton is this here nitrogen is placed. Now, 4 amino name it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, 4 amino at 4 position, 4th position there is the amino group right here. At 2 position there is oxy group. By knowing this here in all pyrimidine hydrogen is placed here. So, by knowing this structure, skeleton and chemical name, you can easily write the structure of cytosine. Now, see the nitrogen H4 valency no doubt here, carbon has 1, 2, 3. So, and nitrogen has 2. So, we can place here double bond. So, here nitrogen has satisfied by the 3 valency, carbon has 4 valency. Now, here carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, no doubt here, but nitrogen has only 3, only 2. So, hydrogen is placed here. Now, in this case, carbon has 1, 2, 3. So, here hydrogen carbon has 1, 2, 3. So, double bond placed here. So, by placing this, we can easily write the structure of uracil and structure of cytosine. Okay. Now, the last one pyrimidine structure that is thymine. Thymine, its abbreviation is T and the chemical name of thymine is 2,4-oxy. 5 methyl pyrimidine. So, you can write the skeleton of pyrimidine that is six ring, six atom ring structure and C, here C carbon is here and these two carbon attached with the nitrogen. Now, the name abbreviation number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now, with the help of this chemical name, we can easily write the structure of thymine. 2, 4 oxy at 2 position oxy group is there, at 4 position oxy group is there and at 5 position there is methyl group. So, by placing this we can easily write the structure of thymidine here thymine here the carbon has 1, 2, 3, 4 valency. So, here carbon has 1, 2, 3. So, by placing here double bond here is hydrogen is here nitrogen has 1 2 so 1 hydrogen is placed here so nitrogen has 1 2 3 carbon 1 2 3 4 here nitrogen has only 2 so hydrogen is placed here so you will see all the carbon and the nitrogen is satisfied with the their bond all carbon have 4 bond and nitrogen have 
3 bond and oxygen have 2 bond. So, this is the structure of thymine that is correct that is thymine. So, by knowing this we see the structure we can we are able to write the all the structure of purine and pyrimidine that is purine are of two type and pyrimidine are of three type and by knowing this structure we can easily write the structure of the all three nitrogenous base. Now, the phosphate group this is the nitrogenous base because nucleotide is made by nitrogenous base sugar and phosphate. We have seen the structure all the five type of nitrogenous base that is adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, uracil which has been placed in, in adenine and guanine are placed in purine, thymine, cytosine and uracil are placed in pyrimidine. Now, the phosphate group is the chief constituent of the nucleotide. It is known as phosphoric acid. That is phosphoric acid. This phosphoric acid, that is as three P O four. This phosphoric acid, the phosphate and sugar which form the backbone of the DNA. The phosphate is as 3 PO 4 in the form of phosphoric acid. This phosphoric acid have acid content COH group and sugar content OH group. This OH and COH, OH and COH group is going to be combined and it help in the formation of phosphodiester bond. at the time of formation of phosphodiester bond in the DNA. We will see later on. Now, this is the two things that is the nitrogenous base and phosphate. Now, third one thing is sugar. We have already seen the structure of sugar. Sugar is pentose. That is C 5 H 10 O 5 it has been divided into two group all group contain aldehyde that is ribose and deoxyribose. We have already discussed the structure of ribose and deoxyribose have a look here the ribose sugar have a skeleton this type here is OH H H OH H OH H CH 2 H by naming this 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, this is the structure of ribose. At second position at the time of writing deoxyribose, we can easily write the structure of deoxyribose. here O H H at second position one oxygen is deleted. So, here is instead of H O H here is only H here H O H here is H here is C H 2 O H. So, this is the structure of deoxyribose and the formula will be C 5 H 10 O 4 here is the formula will be C 5 
H then O 5. Now, after writing all these structure, now we are able to form the structure of DNA with the help of these biomolecules and there is the formation of formation of various type of bond that is called phosphodiester bond and hydrogen bond and glycosidic linkage. The nucleic acid, the particles in nucleus of the cell responsible for the heredity called the chromosome which are made up of protein and another body molecules of the nucleic acid. Two type of nucleic acid have already discussed DNA and RNA. Now, the you see the structure of DNA are of this type which is made by all three groups Here is the 3 prime, 5 prime, here is the 3 prime, 5 prime. This is just like a ladder. The main bamboo of ladder is this, which is made by sugar plus phosphate in DNA that is deoxyribose and phosphate. In between that, adenine always pair with the thymine, one purine is always pair with the another pyrimidine, cytosine always pair with the guanine. The adenine pair with the thymine with the help of double bond, cytosine pair with the guanine with the help of triple bond. The diameter of DNA that is 20 angstrom, so the radius will be 10 angstrom. In one complete tar the distance is 34 angstrom and in this turn 10 nitrogenous base pair are there. So, each nitrogenous base pair have equidistantly arranged that is 3.4 angstrom. So, this is the structure of DNA you will see this structure in class. Now, think over this question what are polyunsaturates? A lipid molecules contain dash molecules of fatty acids. The my third question is a purine has amine group on sixth carbon position is called dash. So, by knowing the all these purines chemical name which I have already discussed you may write this answer easily. Now, my fourth question is a nucleotide consists of dash dash and dash. Now, my last question the glycosidic bond in DNA and RNA connect dash and dash. The glycosidic bond are found in between OH and OH group. So, you may find the where the OH group are present and this OH group liberate water and form the glycosidic bond. It help in the formation of DNA and RNA structure okay. with the this I hope you will easily understand the structure of all the lipids, nucleotides and everything of related with the lipid and nucleic acid. Thank you.